going live going live here we are another sunday been traveling just got home been traveling come on in and join me lots and lots and lots to talk about some grooving energy out there right so much craziness out there in the cosmos more in the real world no in the cosmos too ha huh, come on in and join me yeah let's see making sure i'm working here i'm over here on facebook i'm in the empowered spirit group and i'm over here on instagram as well yeah what a crazy crazy week right really crazy lots going on all right i'll give it another minute before we start let me know if you can hear me give me a thumbs up hi peyton how are you what's going on for you guys i just got back from podcast fest down in florida where your voice matters it was a podcasting weekend it was really great i put a lot of effort into my podcast i really do so learning more learning how to connect with others learning how to just really use my voice to make a difference the reason i started my podcast was because when i first moved back nobody knew what i was doing so i started interviewing people and talking about it and helping to get that information out so it definitely reminded me of that purpose all right all right i got a few thumbs up can you guys hear me on instagram let me know millie how are you doing all right give me a thumbs up let me know for sure come on in hey paul welcome back let me know you can hear me and we will begin. All right. Welcome, everyone. Terry Ann Hyman here. This is my live video for my Empowered Spirit Show, where I talk about the human connection to the spirit, where I talk about what's going on in the cosmos, how that vibration connects to us. We'll do a little meditation, and we also look to the cards for that guidance for all of us for the week. All right, thank you so much for joining me. So it's been a crazy week out there, really mostly towards the weekend, just everything heating up, all this whole coronavirus, virus, all this fear, all this stuff in the cosmos. It is in perfect alignment. I did talk about the Vedic astrology in my Empowered Spirit show. If you didn't hear it, go back and listen to it. It came out yesterday, Saturday, talking about how some of this energy is is in the cosmos this is a pattern we're going through this is some of that transformation energy that we're going through as well so really understanding where you sit with it where you are with that is really important all right i did travel i did wipe down my seats i did use my unguard unguard all the way go do tara and it was interesting to observe it all it really was all right, so that fear is a big thing coming in. And as the moon gets big, tomorrow the moon comes in into a full moon in Virgo. As that moon increases, we're going to see some of these emotions intensify. All right, so I'm really going to ask you, where are you with your own fear? All right, where are you, if you're fearful of that coronavirus, where are you with your health? Checking in with your immune system, checking in with your diet, checking in with what's going on. All right, here we are. This is a huge full moon. It's a super moon close to the earth, going to pull on all of us. All right, it's also the last full moon of winter. All right, so this is an opportunity to start looking at those things within your own self that you need to do to wake up the system. All right, winter we hibernate, winter we pull in, spring we start to open up, we start to move out, we start to want to plant those seeds. So, what is it your immune system needs? It's a great time to start to plan for a cleanse. We need it. Our energy gets to be sluggish if we don't. Check the markets for the new spring items, especially those spring greens, those dandelions. Those things are going to help purge the body, open the lymphatic system for all of us. What will that do? That will help your immune system. All right. So this virus, it is, it's intense. Yes. But it's not like something's going to come at you and you're going to go like, oh, and die in a second. That's not how it works. All right. There is a lot of fear. Companies in big cities are closing off their companies. If people have been exposed, I know Tina's daughter up in New York, she Gap was closing. My son in San Francisco, everybody's working at home. These are precautions for their larger cities. Where we are now is really more taking care of your own energy, all right, and really letting go of that panic. So the full moon comes in, and the tendency is going to be to explode out. But really what we want to do is come in. So one of the beautiful things about the Virgo full moon is the energy that it helps us to ground. All right, Virgo is an earth sign. So when you find that you're kind of up in source, I go kind of go like this because that's how it feels like, ah, right? 
we want to ground, we want to pull the energy in and want to ground. All right. And as you ground, you're going to release the stress. And as you release the stress, you're going to release your energy system from being that overwhelmed, which is going to help you strengthen your immune system. That's the thing we need to concentrate on right now, not the fear, not the panic. And with the full moon, the tendency is want to let the emotional body rule. All right. So really work with that Virgo energy so that you can really start to calm yourself down, all right? The full moons do that to us, but we can also control our energy, all right? And when we align with that higher vibration of the Virgo energy, which is grounding, which is also boundaries, knowing your boundaries, Maybe you need to tighten up on your boundaries these next few weeks, right? Especially as you go through this cycle. Maybe you do need stronger energetic boundaries. All right. Maybe you also need the mental boundaries, the physical boundaries, telling people no, taking care of yourself. Those are really good boundaries. And that is the example of the Virgo moon, especially combined with that Pisces. That Pisces is the sun sign. The Virgo is the moon sign. We have those opposing forces coming in. So we really want to kind of use our intuition our smarts within, the wisdom, the, the Pisces is that wisdom of the old soul. Bring that in and then help use the higher vibrations of Virgo, taking care of yourself. It is a spiritual warrior. Self-love is one of the greatest boundaries you can have. All right. And then you also want to like pull your energetic boundaries in as well. Ground your energy and notice where that fear is coming for you. And if it's out there, because a lot of it is out there, and I say that like in quotes, but pushing it out, let it be out there, but do your part and helping to ground and be that level of peace, all right? I just did a crochet clearing, and it was really finding that higher vibration. And I really think it's important that we look at this virus, especially as a vibration, all right? Fear, panic, there's so many underlying energies going on, but it is a lower vibration. And so as we raise our vibration, you can let that virus go. So really being strong in your practice, really being strong in your diet, even your spiritual energy is going to help you move through this, all right? That doesn't mean, you know, negate the washing of the hands, all right? That's a big part of it. I talked about that in the podcast too. But it does mean lift your vibration, keep very positive, really just be definitive in your boundaries, and that's the best way to work through all of this energy. It will pass, all right? Dr. Tasia, Vedic Astrology, I talked about this in the podcast. He said this big crossing of energies, the... It's in the podcast. He said that this goes until April 21st, all right? So we're going to have to hold on, all right? Now, as we go through the week, we have a lot of things going on, all right? Full moon comes in tomorrow. That's in that Virgo sign, all right? Then we have Mercury energy. We've, Mercury is actually retrograded back into Aquarius, all right? Eric Aquarius, again, is that 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 like that evolutionary energy, that opening up to new possibilities. So it had, was in Pisces, retro, retrograded back into Aquarius, and then it's going to move direct as of like the 9th, as of like tomorrow. But you need to give it the 10th, the 11th, the 12th. You need to give it some time to move out. But what you may notice is like those aha moments, like, oh, my God, this is like a wake-up call. Like, I need to do something. I need to take care of it. And you may feel like that. So we're going to have that come in middle of the week, all right? And then we have a Friday the 13th this week. All right. How crazy can that be? Friday the 13th, the moon will be in Scorpio. And that can be a little bit of that intensity too. So really watch what's going on around you. I have a feeling we're going to see more, it get a little bit more intense before it comes back around, but you can do your part. And under the full moon, you can set those intentions to really be a part of making a shift, making a shift around, the, around you, around your family, around your work of what it is you're doing. All right, so that's kind of the energy that's going on now. The night skies have been beautiful. We've been seeing the Venus and the moon together. And right now, <clears throat> if you do get up early in the mornings, early mornings, you know, when it's still that twilight, you also can see Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, all right, before dawn. So if you've been out there looking at that, check that out as well. The moon will be in Virgo. It's a super moon. They also call it the worm moon, Native American lore, all right? because the worms are starting to come out. They know too. We're starting to have to reach up, open up. We got a lot of work to do this spring, right? That's what's going on with that. There are other names for it, but that is it. And it's also the first of the three supermoons. And again, supermoon just means it's really closely intense, close proximity to the earth. But to me, that's a powerful more vibration as well. All right. So we do have a lot of energy going forward. Take some time to calm down. Be in your energy. Use that those elements of Virgo, grounding, boundaries, a spiritual warrior for yourself. 
Tighten up on your immune system, all right? Check in with that as well as you move through this week. Don't flip out. Don't go crazy on the 13th. It's just another day. Really just calm yourself down and continue to remind yourself it's an earth energy and ground as you need to, all right? So let's take a moment and just do that. Let's ground our energies and center ourselves and set some intentions for the week, all right? <sighs> Wherever you can, take a nice deep inhale going to say wherever you are, if you can, close your eyes. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Pulling in the energies from this weekend, letting it all settle down. Inhaling up the body and exhale, sending it back down deep into the earth. Calling in your energy, calling your body back in, shoulders and shoulders, hips and hips, feet and feet. Feel the boundaries, feel the orc field pulling in, releasing out any of that fear, false evidence appearing real, just let it all go. Take another deep inhale and exhale. Let us just take a moment and honor where we are right here in the season, the cycle of the moon, the last full moon of winter. The medicine wheel, we find the winter in the direction of the north. So we offer gratitude for this winter, gratitude for our dreams and our visions, gratitude to now be able to plant the seeds to go forward, coming up. So allow yourself to open up, to start to wake the body, the spirit, the mind, the emotions, wake them up into a newness for yourself as you call in the directions for guidance and protection to the north, the east, the south, and the west above us, below us, right into the very center, calling into your spirit, setting an intention for this week, right into the third eye center, whatever it may be for you. And then allow those elevated emotions of peace, of gratitude, joy. How will you feel as these intentions come in? And allow that to radiate out into the org field, sending it out, those elevated emotions as you release the intention. No attachment, no judgment. Just setting that energy for you. Clearing the breath, inhaling up the body. And exhale, sending it back down deep into the earth, anchoring in with the earth. Inhaling, allow yourself to stretch into the higher realms, into the cosmic forces. Exhale, bringing it down, honoring that beautiful moon. It may even look full tonight if you see it. Inhaling and exhaling. Dropping into the heart. We just call in the energy, the archangel, Michael. Michael, who brings in the energy of joy, helping us to release the fear. Joy is a high vibration. As you need, call in. Inhaling and exhaling. Noticing the shift. Noticing the centering of energy, calming down. Starting to bring the awareness back. Blinking the eyes open, coming back. All right. Feels good. A couple of meditations as if I never traveled. All right. Yes. All right. We're going to draw some cards and see what guidance comes forward. So I love this card that came up today. The first one, a major arcana. This is the temperance card. I loved it. And when it came over, I was like, ah, temperance. Temperance is a balancing of the elements, all right? So that fear, fear, balance it out with that calmness, all right? Generally, we talk about with this card that the heron is kind of holding that space, all right? It's helping you to really find the balance of elements that you need and reminding us that, you know, fire and water can be very extreme elements. So what do you need to do to balance a life with you? And I always like to think about it, too, as the inner world and the outer world as well. All right, what is it you need to do to balance that? It is a healing card. Heron does represent the healing. And look at the way the elements come in here. 
So looking in your own self right now, are you way ahead of yourself? Do you need to pull your energy back? Do you need to get back into alignment with your health? What is it that you need to find that balance of the elements for you? All right, that's a great reminder for all of us as we go through this week, kind of what we were talking about as we realign. So if you chose card number one, all right, you got to laugh at this one too. This is the five of wands. So this is about like hassles and conflict and things being up in the air. So a lot of us are going through this now, right? Maybe we're seeing it in our work. Maybe we're seeing it in our own life and our own goals. Like we're feeling really disjointed. So much is up in the air. All right. So this is a good opportunity to really start to recognize where can you now make some plans moving into spring? Where can you reorganize your life to do that? And that will help because it's not totally chaotic. But things are up in the air, and generally fives do represent conflict or change. Now, wands is our passions and our desires, so this is kind of showing you like where underneath the surface are things not where you want it to be. And when we find that, it's always an opportunity for new growth, which is the second card. This is the son of wands, and this is a lot of that transformation energy. This, the snake energy is always transformational. Look, it's sharp, it's bright, it knows what it wants. It's a very passionate energy that surfaces from the inside and just opens up and explodes to the outside. So it is, sun is that masculine energy. It's kind of the younger energy. So it does remind us to have some of that innocence for where we are. But the thing I really love about this, this is kind of like that, it's like that passion, like now it's time to open up. It's like that energy of where the mercury retrograde goes back and now it's coming forward and it's opening up to that new innovation. That's the energy coming forward, that new innovation for you in order to make those changes, balancing out what you need. And the third card is a great card to follow this. This is the chariot. All right, this is about being determined, having an idea, going forward in your life. Look, he's got like his, his metal on here, right? It's like horsepower. It's like your will. So when you do have that energy, and you may feel this this week as we come out of that Mercury retrograde, you're ready to go forward. I know I am. I have my to-do list. Yay, right? I have a to-do list. Ready to go forward to take care of these things that are putting me on this path. So you may notice this as you move through the week for you as well. All right? So just to review, we're all going through this shifting of energy. We're all asked to be looked at what are the balancing forces in our own life, the balancing elements, inner and outer. All right? That's the deeper part of it. But where else can you balance for yourself this energy? All right? The first card was conflict change, hassles coming up, coming around. Things like throwing up in the air, but where, where do you want them to land? Where do you want them to land? It's passions and desires. It's not the mental. This is like some of that deep inner work. All right. And then this is like bursting forward with new energy, new hope, new prosperity coming forward for you. All in that positive, all in that why energy, that new innovation. And then the third one is knowing that path and really taking the steps that you need to take to move forward. All right. Being determined where your medals be smart. Have that horsepower to move forward. I love this card. I always love it when it comes up. All right. Some really great cards to move through this week. Really important to really work with the energy. Don't let that full moon blow you out as well. Be sure to go back and check the podcast. Dropped yesterday. Well, it just came out. I always think it's already because I do it in advance. But anyway, actually, this was pretty relevant to right here, right now. Check out what Dr. Tasia says about the transits in Vedic astrology. And there's a beautiful healing meditation. It's like getting a Reiki session from me long distance. And you don't have to go anywhere. And you don't have to touch anything. All right. Two Reiki circles this week. Wednesday at Birmingham Yoga, 530. And Practice Works is our second, um, second of the Friday month at 12 noon. If you haven't been to Practice Works, come. it's a drop-in. Both are drop-in. Restorative Yoga. Don't let the class go to waste. Come join us. All right. It's a great class. Bring it in. Sometimes we need, think we need to be active and really crazy, but restoring, calming is just as important. All right, I do have a Reiki 1. If you haven't taken Reiki 1, come on in and join me this Saturday, Reiki 2 in April and Reiki 3 Mastery. Don't forget to sign up for those of you who have done 1 and 2. All right, that is what is going on for me this week. All right, questions about the cards. If you'd like a question, let me know. All right, Ernest, I see your first request for a card. And I'll check through over here on Instagram. Go ahead and post if you would like a card, and I will be so happy to pull one for you. All right. The Empress. Ernest, this is the Empress. This is all about being really strong in your energy. This is like really like digging in, grounding, perfect for the Virgo moon, right? 
Look at the halo around, like radiate out that energy. Have the ability to tune in, lift those elevated emotions and follow that. And this is a major arcana. So this is a good time to open up to that better part of who you are within, pull it out and radiate that energy. Stand, tr stand strong. All right, this also reminds me too, like go outside and meditate with the tree and you'll feel that radiance come in for you and all the wisdom that comes forward as well. All right, Kimberly, I did see it was your birthday. Happy birthday. My son's was yesterday, so you're definitely a Pisces. All right, Kim, this card is for you. This is a nine of wands. So this is a great card that reminds you, like, keep doing your work, keep building it up step by step by step, all right? It's leading you into higher ground. So don't give up. Keep doing what you're doing. It's that passion and desire, so always checking in. What is my why? Is my why leading me? And this is a great card to continue on from your birthday. Happy, happy birthday. All right. Yay. All right, Millie, a card for you. Marissa next. Raylene, yeah, Buffy next. All right. So, Millie, this card is for you. So, this is the eight of, of uh, swords. So, this is really about really being strong in who you are, knowing your own mind. All right. Don't let others influence you. Know your own mind so that you can open up to where you're going, all right? It's almost like you're isolating yourself a little bit because this one says this and this one says this, but allow yourself to open up, all right? Eight is also, uh, eights do have that abundance energy. So allow yourself to transform into that next phase. Coming out of winter, a great time to really follow up with this card and really be stronger in the emotions. Don't let other people's thoughts deter what it is and who you are, all right? What it is you're doing and who you are. All right, great card. Yay, the Empress. Yay. All right, let me know how that is. All right, Maris. Maris, the Holy Priestess. All right, this is a great card of knowing who you are right now. All right, this is where you hold that knowledge and just be proud of that and have the courage to sit on it and just really have that knowledge come in. You know the answers. You've got the moon above you and you've got the world right here, the earth there. And look how like she sits between the two. So just stay strong. You know what is going on. Don't doubt it. All right. Good card. I love this for you. The High Priestess. Excellent. All right. Ray Lee. Ray Lenny. Ray Lee. I don't know. Ray. All right. Ray, you got the Six of Swords. All right. So this is always an interesting card. This is a card that tells you that whatever all that chatter of the mind is going on, done. It's done. There's no sense in trying to hold on or savage. It's done. So whatever those things are going on that's making you spin your mind, those thoughts, those things that are happening, it's done. And the minute you start to release it, you start to rise up and look. Rainbow. All right. It is a six. So there is some of that energy that has to balance up. So let it go, especially the spinning of those minds. All right. Let me know how that sits. All right, Buffy. Buffy, how are you? Buffy, come take Reiki 3. Give me a call about it. All right, Buffy, transformation. All right, the death card. Now, don't get flipped out. This is not a physical death, but more shedding of the skin. It's time to make a transformation, time to make a change. I like when this card comes up because it allows me to let go of something. A good time as we come from one season to another. Shed that skin, all right, really good. And as you do, you're going to build up into something else, all right? Always a good card when this card, I think. Always a good card when it comes up. Transformation. All right, Ash, Peyton. All right, going to move to Colorado. Wow, I would love to hear your plans. All right, this card is for you. This is a nine of pentacles. So this is a good card, Ash, that keeps telling you to keep doing what you're doing. Keep building up, keep building your skills, keep going with it. It's in your, your physical world, your work world, and all those skills that you're doing. Look how everything is lining up. Look at the colors. All right, so this is the physical world for you, your work, your business, it can be your health as well, but it feels like it's more of like how you're busy, how you're building all your skills, especially in school, but all those other school skills that you're gaining. All right. Good card. Really keep going. Nines always represent a little more coming in for you. All right. Hey, Mayor, how are you? All right, Mayor. Ha ha. Ray is what my family calls me. Oh, I love it. Yay. All right. Great card, Marissa. Yes, absolutely. Great. I love that. Making some time for myself. Yes. Excellent. All right, yay, Reiki three, yes, I'm gonna call you. All right, so this card is for, Buffy, I don't think I did your card. This card is for, no, did I do your card? I'm lost, Mare. <laughs> I'm not lost. Mel, this is the Wheel of Fortune, just so many comments. 
this is a good card, Mayor, because this is like just saying like the, the universe has your back, all right? Even though we may get frustrated with what's going on, and it may seem like a lot is in there, and a lot is, but the thing I always say is like, be grateful where you are in life. The world is always spinning. You're always protected. And so like when we're on top, it's like gratitude for what you have because we're going to spin. When you're on your bottom, gratitude for what's going on, it's going to rise to the top. We're always going around and around. We have everything we need. You've got the wise owl, the moon, the sun. All of this energy is weaving a beautiful web for you. Trust. The universe has your back. All right? Love this. The wheel of fortune. Sometimes, too, we say make a wish. All right? Great card, ma'am. All right. Who did I miss? I got so excited there. All right. Some really good cards. Some really transformation energy. Do your work. Stay really grounded, all right? Don't get into that fear. Check out the podcast. That will certainly help you. Don't get into the fear. Be strong in who you are. Check in with your health. <sighs> Take a nice deep inhale as we go to close. Inhaling and exhaling. Returning to that elevated emotion for you. Keep your vibration high as you move through this week. Set your crystals out. It's a good time to cleanse them at the last full moon of this winter season. Spring is coming. Take one more nice deep inhale. And exhale. May it be a great week. Stay strong. Don't get into the panic. Wash your hands. To your spirit. Namaste.